Hi, my name is Katie Murphy. I'm a support analyst with the Razor's Edge here at Black Lab. And in this video, we are going to walk through how to send e-receipts in Razor's Edge. So before we actually get started with setting up the email receipts, uh, we do need to make sure that we have our SMTP server setting in configuration. If we don't have those set up, then we're going to get some error messages when we actually try to send the receipt. Before we even move on to doing the e-receipts, let's make sure we have this setting correct first. So we will select config over in the navigation bar, and then we'll go to business rules, and then select mail options. Now, there are only three fields that we need to worry about populating here. If you see that this information is already set up, you can go ahead and move on. If it's not, the first field we need to populate is SMTP email server. If your database is not hosted by BlackBot, you can probably get this information from your IT department. If you are hosted by BlackBot, then uh, the information you'll input here is actually included in our knowledge base solution on how to send e-receipts. The port number will always be 25, whether you're hosted or not and the SMTP authentication method will be set to anonymous. So once we have those three fields filled out, we are ready to go check out our e-receipts. We'll start by going to Mail, Highlight Receipts, and you can either open up the receipt parameter file that you've been working with or click New to create a new one. I'm going to go ahead and open up my existing file. Now if you are new to sending receipts in the Razor's Edge, uh, or if you'd like a refresher on how to go through all of these tabs, to configure everything, we have another great knowledge base solution called How to Print Receipts. Uh, so I would recommend checking that out. There's a video attached to that one as well, so you can watch the video, get familiar with how to set up the receipt parameter file. And once you have all of that set up, we can come back and get started with sending the emails. So that's the only portion we're going to deal with in this specific video. So a little bit of information about the e-receipts. When a donor receives the receipt, in their email, they're going to have an email message. That message we're actually going to compose from the e-receipts tab. And then attached to that email, they're going to have a hard copy of the receipt. Uh, it'll come as a PDF format, and that's going to be created through the custom data file. So for the receipt type, we do have to choose create custom data file. Uh, we won't be able to use a pre-printed receipts for this. Before we get started with the custom data file, I do want to give you one word of caution. Go ahead and select the e-receipts tab. Make sure send as e-receipts is not marked. The only time we want to have this box marked is if we're actually ready to send the receipts. Uh, for right now, we're just going to go through the word merge wizard, make sure our template looks great, and make sure that everything is okay because we don't want to send something with typos or a blank document to our donors. So make sure you don't have that marked, and then we will continue. So we'll go back to the general tab, and then we're going to click send to word merge wizard. On the first box, we will click next. It's going to ask if we'd like to mark the gifts as having been receipted. For what we're doing right now, we're going to click no. Until we're actually sending the e-receipt, until we've completely finalized everything, we're always going to click no on this. If we click yes, it's going to mark the gift as receipted, and it's also going to assign it a receipt number. And we don't want to do either of those things yet. So I'll click no. Choose if you'd like to do a simple or conditional mail merge and click next and then click Edit Merge Document. Now, if this is new for you, it's going to launch a blank template, in which case you can type out all of your text, and to add your merge fields for the letter, you'll select the Add-ins tab, choose Insert Razor's Edge field, and you can select any of your fields here to put into the letter. These fields are actually defined in the fields to include tab on the mail parameter file. So if you're missing something here, go back to the mail parameter file and you can probably add it from the fields to include tab. So once we have the template set up the way we need to, we'll click save and return to RE7. Make sure we use the save and return to RE7 rather than file save and close because sometimes that won't actually save the changes that we make. So always go to the add-ins tab save and return to RE7. That'll take us back to the mail merge wizard. From here, we're going to click Next. Now this brings us to where we can save the document. This is the file path right here for where it's going to save. If you want to change the file path or the name of the file, click on the binoculars and you can make those changes. And once we have that set, we will click Finish. And this is going to ask us if we want to overwrite the document, and this is only if we've saved it to the same location before. I've done this a couple of times, and it's fine to overwrite it, so I will click Yes. So what this does here, it just brings up just the merge file. So this is what is going to be attached to the email to the donor. So what you want to do at this point is just take a quick run through the whole document. Make sure it has the right number of pages. 
So I have one out of one, and I only anticipated sending one receipt, so that's fine. And there are no typos or anything like that in here. So to me, all of this looks great. I'm ready to go ahead and send this to my donors. I'll close out of here. It's already saved to my documents. And now we're ready to set up the actual email message. Select the e-receipts tab. And now we are ready to mark the box for send as e-receipts. So go ahead and check that. The reason that it's okay now is because we've already verified that everyone who's getting a receipt printed should have a receipt printed. And we've also verified that the receipt looks okay in the mail merge wizard. So uh, now we'll click write message. This is to actually compose the email that we're sending to the donors. In the from box, we're going to enter the email address that we want them to see the email as being from. Now, keep in mind, this is not actually who is sending the email. The email is coming from the SMTP server settings that we put in configuration already. So you won't actually see this in the sent box of your email, but the donor will see it when they open up their email. So it will look like it is from you. Uh, and then we also want to fill out the subject, and this will be the subject for the email. And lastly, we need to fill out the actual message. This is kind of like the mail merge wizard. You can fill out any of your text that you need to, and if you want to insert a field, you can come up here to insert field and choose whichever one you want to pull from the constituent or gift record. These are the same fields that you see in the custom data file. They're the same ones on the fields to include tab. And once we have that part completed, we will click OK. The next section to define are the email types. So we will find the available email types on the left here, and the ones that we're actually using will be defined on the right. We will choose whichever emails we want to include in our mailing. Uh, just select it and then click the arrow to the right, and then we'll move it to the email types to use. Now the order here does matter, so let's say we have John Doe's record and he has two email addresses on his preferred address record. He may have one email and one e-mail. The receipt is going to be sent to his email address rather than his e-mail address because email is listed first. So if you do need to change the order, you can select these and click the up or down arrows as needed. Uh, we next have the option to specify what happens if no emails meet the criteria. If it doesn't meet any, then we can either remove the record from the run entirely or we can use the first email address found. The next option we have is to create an exception query. I definitely recommend doing this. We can either do a constituent query or a gift query. And what this will do is it will throw all of the records that either have no email address at all on their record or that have request no email marked on their record into this query. So it'll be easy for us to identify who did not receive the email based on not having an email address or not wanting an email. And that's all that we need to set up for the message portion. So we're almost done here. We're going to go back to the general tab. And on the bottom of this, we're also going to mark the option to create an output query. So if that's not already marked, go ahead and check that box. Again, we have the option for gift or constituent output query. I'm going to leave mine set to gift for now. The reason why this one is so important, especially when we're sending e-receipts, is because, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, the from email address, you don't get to see who the emails were sent to from your sent folder. So essentially, this output query is how we're going to see who received these emails. It's definitely handy to have in case you need to refer to that information or if you need to make any changes or contact them again. Mark that option, uh, and then we should be set to go ahead and merge these records. To actually send the emails, click Merge. This is going to bring up the same option that we had before. If you need to change where we're saving the document, you can click on the binoculars. We'll click OK. And I do want to overwrite my document, so I'll click Yes. Now this uh, is going to pop up to save our exception query because we did mark the option to create one. So save that. It's going to save in the query module. We're going to get another box to save another query. This is for the regular output query. So we'll click Save on this too. The last option that we have to choose is how we're going to mark the gift records. Now, at this point, the emails are already going out. So it's very likely that we want to mark them as being receipted. And we also want to update the receipt number. If that's all we want to change, we're going to select the option receipted. The other option is receipted and acknowledged, so we can update the receipt number field, the receipt status, and we can also mark it acknowledged at the same time if you want this receipt to also work as like a thank you letter. We also have the option to mark do not update, but again, as I mentioned, we are actually sending the receipts now, so we probably do want to at least mark them as receipted. Go ahead and mark mine as receipted and click OK. It'll take just a second to write the document. It may take a little bit longer because it's sending the emails and writing the document, so don't be alarmed if it takes just a little bit longer than usual.
So here is my merge document. This is what's going to be in the attachment on their email. And you may have heard my Outlook ding because I just got the notification in my email about my e-receipt. This looks fine. It's already saved and my email has been sent. So that's all you have to do to send your e-receipts. I'd recommend going through the written steps and the knowledge-based solution if you have any questions about this. Thanks for taking the time to watch this today.